Governing a state like Lagos for Mr. Governor, Mr. Babagide Sonwolu, is serious business. And so let's bring you latest engagements of Mr. Governor from the Governor's Office. Periodical project inspection across the city of Lagos, especially as it relates to transport infrastructural projects, is of great concern to the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babayude Sumulu. At the end of his recent tour of projects across the state, Mr. Governor gave an update on the areas inspected, citing the significant projects made so far We've been out for the past four hours or four and a half hours or so. Now we're at the intersection of Apapa Road that takes us into the Butemeda train station. So we're at the section of Muritala Mohamed turning into Apapa Road. Our journey today started from Agege Station, where we all view and saw what we're doing at Agege Station. And at Agege Station, we also have NRC station there. So that's where, when trains, if NRC is running, and they are bringing passengers from Ibadan. That's the station in which they are going to come down if they want to join our own intracity train services. And you can see that there's a connectivity between our own station in Agege and the NRC station in Agege. From Agege, we moved to Ikeja. Ikeja happens to be the iconic station on the red line. And you can see that that station is on a wide expanse of about 240 meters. In clear terms, that's the size of almost three football fields. And it's at roof level. It's going into completion. And all of the things, all of the furniture that needs to make it a first-class um, train station, you can see that we're on track with it. After that, we went to inspect the overpass, which is the vehicular, the bridge from Aula Road onto Agege Motor Road, going towards Mongoro. You can also see that that bridge, which has two... Two flanks is a T-bridge. It's on the plan to be completed by the end of October. And you can see that you know significant work has gone onto that bridge overpass. The overpass is really for the rail to be able to go underneath. From there, we all joined again and went to the Mushin station. Similarly, also at the Mushin station, you have a bridge that crosses from Kayode, Leonipan site, the Ikorodu Road side of the bridge, onto the Ogumoku site in Mushin, going towards Agege Motor Road. You could see that the bridge are out and it's on, it's on schedule. There were a few challenges in that area. There are one or two schools that we need to re re relocate, and there's a massive, massive you know, um, regeneration that we plan for that whole place. You could see that on the rail track, there are several demolitions that are taking place. Government has paid extensive amount far and over beyond what anybody could have expected on that entire that's why we don't have any problem at all and you also saw the station that's also going on there so at mushi we have the bridge overpass we also have the station there. so that makes the second bridge overpass from there we were at yaba train station again there are two major infrastructure development there the train station is at roof level. You could see that it's on track, it's on schedule, and it will meet the October-November deadline. Similarly, you also saw the bridge there. The bridge from Teju Show that now exits into Muritala Mohammed is also a T-bridge, and the contractor was on site, and the contractor also had indicated by November, before the end of this year, that whole bridge also will be up. From there, we are now here, at Ebutemeta, and we're at the junction, like I said, of Ebutemeta, which is Apapa Road and Marita Lamuame. Similarly, as well here, we have a bridge overpass and we have a train station. We've been to the train station before you know that um, that has also the, the, the civil works of that station have been completed. It's just the finishing that we're doing in that station. And you can see the bridge overpass as well. It's also on schedule to ensure that they hand over this November, December at the latest. This, has, this particular place has been extremely very challenging because of the vehicular density here and the fact that it was difficult for the contractor to have access to be able to do they are drilling so that they can come up with, with all of the pairs. But I'm happy that all of that has happened now. So what they're doing is they are doing concrete in situ and they are doing also precast so that they can put you know all of the beams um, on schedule. So that really is our journey today on the red line. And like you said, the red line is a project that was conceived by this government 
is a project that was started by this government and you can see that we have given commitment by, by the end of this year we should be rounding up on the red line. This is our third or our fourth trip with, with you gentlemen of the press this year alone and you can see that each time we come there has been significant progress that the contractors have achieved you know on this on this corridor. The recently held Lagos State APC meeting gave the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajude Sonwulu, an opportunity to challenge party members and stakeholders to close ranks ahead of the 2023 elections. The governor gave his candid advice on strategies to mend fences, strengthen the unity of the party, and not to take anything for granted to give the party victory. We cannot lose this opportunity. It's even now you need to work double extra hard to ensure that people that do not know our path they do not write our history. We have a unique opportunity in Lagos. Listen, it is all of us. Our polling votes have moved from 8,000 to 13,000. Kaba and Green Bay need your election at the 2020, 2020, 2020, in 13,000 polling votes. Before 10 o'clock, at 300,000. So we can say we can indeed make those numbers that we're talking about. We we'll all come back stronger, bigger, and better as a party. We will resolve all of those that are different. We will ensure that we continue to communicate among themselves. Because we all want the very best for the party. There will be rambles here and there. But I can assure you that we will ensure that. We we'll resolve this thing. We will not take anybody to chat. We will not take anybody for granted. You've written here about 33 out of 50. The fact that you wrote it, it means that in your heart you believe that we can resolve it somehow. That for me is the positive thing that I'm taking away. In forbearance of his open door policy with the media, the Lagos State Governor hosted a guild of editors to a dinner at his residence to have a robust interactive session as a way of filling their polls on governance in Lagos. The editors representing their various media organizations raised questions bordering from entertainment to security and infrastructural development. In his response, Mr. Governor clear the air on some issues raised. In the month of November, it's going to be a full month of tourism. We're going to be hosting the NAFEST Festival, which is a festival for arts and culture in the whole of the country. Which, thirdly, we're also going to be hosting UNWTO, which is the World Tourism Organization at the National Art Theatre. We're going to be making sure that they're part of the National Art Theatre will be ready. And further down, we're also going to have an art exhibition also in November. On the entertainment side as well, for the Nollywood, we're actually supporting them. We're giving them grants. Third set of grants that we give. We just give them grants. It's not a loan. Whatever it is that they agree that is deserving of this thing. So we're doing it. And we're training them. We're training them using Ebony Life. We're training them in Del York. We've trained over 4,000. We pay all their, all their tuition fees. There's also a big activity on entertainment. The Eddie's Award that's going to happen in the U.S. That's the first time they're taking out of this show. Lagos is the biggest sponsor. A year and a half ago, we said we wanted to retrofit about 1,900 poles to retrofit into new bright LED lights. You know, and that we've done significantly. I think that project has gone into about 90%. So if you go on Todd Melamine and they put on a light, you realize that, in fact, you can turn off your headlight. If you go on Bodylon, if you go on, you actually can. It's, they are brighter, they're stronger. It's supposed to reduce our total cost you know, at, um, you know, buying diesel, buying new generators and reduce the consumption of these street lights because they are low energy. And so you can use a lot more, you know, for the same size of diesel and generators that, that we have. The security of life and property, as I promised, is paramount. You know, and I've, I've charged them all, I've encouraged them and I've said to them, whatever we can do within our means. You know, they will always ask for cement, go and bring this, go and bring this, go and, but, but we'll try within our means because not doing it or the consequences of you not supporting them has greater implications. So we'll do it to keep our city and our state safe. Third Milan Bridge with all of the manholes and portholes, um, I have actually also noticed it, to be honest with you. We'll escalate it to engineer Kuti and um, Pokpola. And your third question is, when are you going to finish this rail? That's one of our own legacy. 
who have promised Lagosians that it's going to happen. And by the grace of God, it will happen in our life. It will happen first this year and the second one within the first quarter next year. We will not wait for election to deliver those two real projects. On the 18th, we are going to be, we are going to finish in the last pile, the last uh, pier. You know, they'll be putting the last concrete. The only thing that, that will delay this one, one will run on electricity. The other will run on diesel. So the one that is running, which is the blue line, we have to do a dedicated power line. And that's, that's, that's going on right now. And finally, from the governor's office, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Sonulu, took time out from his busy schedule to attend the 70th birthday of Senator Daisy Danjuma alongside other top dignitaries in the political space. The governor described the celebrant as a woman of substance. This is indeed another grand ceremony. A simple but classic ceremony for a woman that means different things to different people. A woman that has indeed been a bridge builder, both across the Niger and across all ethnic divides in our country. A completely decriminalized Nigerian, a factious woman. But more importantly, and everybody who will be envious of this, a Lagosia. Senator Daisy Dungeon. Because you can see, and, and, and I think you should, you should clap for that Lagos part of it. You know, um, in our active life, and in the life at which all of us got to truly, truly appreciate and know her, Lagos has remained home to her and her husband. And so for me, personally, I have grown to know her more, more, more um, personal in the last five, seven years. I remember when I was um, going around and um, I was an aspirant, I became a candidate five years ago. She opened her door for me and I cannot forget. Your advice, your admonition, your expectation and your clarity of thought still lives with me. You are a woman that indeed will speak to what the issues are and you will not be mindful of who is on the other side. You will indeed admonish when there is a need and encourage when there is a need. And you speak your mind. I want to thank you very much. And that's the storyline from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show.